Dave Johnson, and I've been a member of Trariton Baptist Church since 1981, and I have the privilege of uh, serving in driving a Sunday school bus and working, helping in the Spanish ministry. Uh, I also have the privilege of uh, serving God on the, on the mission field in Mexico for 10 years. It's been wonderful to see how God has worked in my life and in my family while we've been here for you. I grew up in uh, York, Pennsylvania, South Central Pennsylvania, and I, I grew up in the late 50s and during the 60s, and I, I have a lot of fond memories of my childhood. Um, I grew up in a, a stable family, good mom and good dad, they were always there for us. I remember being taught um, to work hard, to be honest, um, to help people, treat people right, and also to reverence God. I was, I was raised Roman Catholic. But during my high school years, I eventually uh, got with the wrong crowd, uh, started living a worldly life like a lot of young people during that time. And, uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, got through high school, graduated from high school, and when I finished high school, um, I decided that I wanted to study engineering, and I went to Penn State University to study engineering. And there was a local branch of the university in our city, and I began to attend there. And it, it was during my second year at Penn State University that um, my twin brother, who was home on spring break, uh, came to me and wanted to talk to me about spiritual things. Uh, actually, he said to me, uh, do you, uh, he said, uh, I want to talk to you about something real important. And I could see he never looked that serious. And, and I could tell that he, had, he really had something on his heart he wanted to share with me. And so I said, sure. And during Easter week, the, the week preceding Easter, 1978, I remember it was a Thursday night at 7.30, and my brother sat down with me, and he opened the Bible and shared with me the gospel. And he had no idea what was going on in my life, but God had brought me to a point at that time that I would listen. And uh, uh, it, was, it was a difficult time during my life, and I was reaping the results of just my worldly living. And, it was during that time that my, my brother shared Christ with me. And I remember the thing I remember most was when he shared what Jesus did for me on the cross. I realized what my sin did to Jesus and how much he suffered and died for my sins. And it, and it became very personal before I realized that Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world. But that night I knew that he was on that cross because of my sin. And it really broke my heart, and um, it led me to, to love him and to want to receive him as my personal savior. And that's what I did. As a Roman Catholic, I grew up um, following the steps of my religion. I was baptized as a baby. I was, uh, I, I received my first communion, I was later confirmed, and every month I went and confessed my sins to the priest. And the dip, but by the time I was 20 years old, I realized that my life was not getting more holy, it wasn't getting better as far as, far as uh, my relationship to God but it was getting further away because I was, I was satisfied just living a worldly life. Um, sin didn't bother me. And, but when I received Christ as my personal savior, and again, it was, it was, at, it was when, um, it was when I realized what my sin did to Jesus on the cross and it broke my heart that things changed. I didn't, I, 
I was not comfortable in my sin anymore and I wanted to live for God. <clears throat> and I remember after being saved, I remember having a peace and joy in my heart that I never experienced before. And I knew my life was different after I was saved and my life did not change from one day to another overnight, instantly. Um, I went through a, a period of time where if I was doing some of the things that I did before I was saved, I felt different. I did not feel comfortable. And it was like God was telling me in, in my heart, what are you doing? You're, you're a child of God now. And I, I felt convicted. I felt guilty about doing some of the things that I had done before. And I, I didn't want to do them anymore because I didn't feel comfortable. And so little by little, I started, um, I stopped, I, rather I stopped doing those things that, that I used to do by habit. And I started, I wanted to live for God and do things that were pleasing to God. I had grown to, to love God, I had grown to serve God. And I remember a saying, only love, one life will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. And I wanted to do God's will more than anything else. And uh, so after about a year, um, I spoke to my pastor about studying for the ministry and he recommended Fairhaven Baptist College. I had never been to Indiana. I had never been much out of Pennsylvania. And to me, Indiana was like halfway around the world. Uh, but he recommended the college and there was another uh, young man in our church that had gone there. And so I found out about Fairhaven Baptist College and I had visited another school, but after praying about it, um, and I knew that God was directing me to Fairhaven Baptist College. And so I prepared uh, to go there and in the summer of 1981, I had left home. Um, everything I've, I owned, I put in that little Ford Pinto wagon and I headed west to Indiana. And I got, I got here in the fall of 1981 and started college, enrolled in college at Fairview Baptist College. It was during my third year at Fairview Baptist College that, that the Lord was speaking to my heart about being a missionary. And I remember in the summer of 1984, uh, reading about the need in Mexico City, actually through a National Geographic magazine. And the cover story was Mexico City. And that is really what got my attention about the need there. And I began to pray about going to Mexico City as a missionary. <clears throat> uh, when I when I got out of college, I visited Suriname, South America, and I was also considering Suriname, South America, as a place of service. But it was after that trip that God confirmed in my heart that He wanted us to go to Mexico City as missionaries. And so we we stayed here at Fairhaven, and we served the Lord here, and. Uh, after about two years, we began deputation in the summer of 1987. And by June of 1989, we had finished deputation and went to Mexico. We spent our first year in language school in Querétaro, Mexico. And then after language school, being there for a year, we went to Mexico City. And when we went to Mexico City for a survey trip, we went through the northern suburbs of Mexico City and it was, I, I just felt that that's where the Lord wanted us to start a work. And so on the north, in the northwestern suburb of Mexico City, we began um, a, a, a mission work there in the fall of 1990. If you have never been to Fairhaven Baptist Church, maybe you're like I was many years ago, when I was invited to a church that was different from what I was used to attending. And Fairhaven is like that church. It's a place where you can come. It's, it's a place where your entire family can be ministered to. And just like my family was ministered to here, 
and um, where God can speak to your heart, where you can see God working in people's lives and people literally changed, their lives changed through salvation in Christ. And just a wonderful church family where you can, uh, in, in, a, in a clean manner, in, in a, where you can just fellowship with uh, good godly people and serve the Lord together. And you'll, you will not find a place like Farragut Baptist Church that is friendlier and that cares more about people and that cares about your family and uh, will help your family in any way they can. If you have never had a life, the life-changing experience of accepting Christ as your Savior, I could personally tell you from my own testimony that God loves you God wants to forgive you of your sins. And if you call upon him, he will forgive you and come into your heart and save you, no matter what you've done. And you will experience that same peace and joy that I experienced when I accepted Christ. And I can honestly tell you that God is so good. He, is so, he has been so good to me and he will be good to you if you ask him into your heart.